The reason I'm I'm uh, been involved in this, in this program because I think Keystone has a very impressive uh, track record on 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 symposia, and that's why I got involved when I was looked upon to be one of the persons to help take Keystone to Brazil, and. Uh, together with uh, the group of leading researchers in the country and actually supporters from the, from the state and the national foundations that support uh, scientific developments in the country. Uh, we were uh, very help, happy in getting this together and being able to put the Keystone, what we call Keystone Brazil, but I think it's more like Keystone Latin America, to tell the truth, because the attendance of the first ones had a lot of Latin Americans. So I think that's, that's a by itself a major impact. So I think this is a, an, an issue that needs to be taken into account. And uh, so bringing out the new one on co-infections and, and, and Charles' global health, together with two very important leading individuals like David Dunn from the University of Cambridge and uh, Andrea Graham from Princeton, I think brings a whole new perspective to this, this, these types of programs. Co-infection is actually rather the no, normal situation than exceptions in, in most of these diseases. Very hard to study. And I think that's why co-infection has been given little attention. It's becoming more and more important, and more, not, not important, but more and more discussed by the scientific community now than in the past. Because it's, mainly because it's difficult to study. So by putting, getting David, uh, Andrea, and myself together, we were brought the whole group of individuals on different areas to, to actually study co-infections. So we, you, you see in the program, it will be HIV, HTLV, tuberculosis, geo helmets, you know, and uh, bac mycobacteria like leprosy and uh, T. So we think be a very heavy on looking at these different uh, uh, pathogens actually may interact in human and experimental models. So I think that actually does give, make a major impact on, on, our, on how to understand this uh, the immune response in individuals that have these two, more than one infection. And uh, what Andrea brings is a very important component, that's mathematical modeling. Uh, modeling in this disease becomes a crucial issue because it's dealing with large populations with uh, co-infections. And how you're going to model to treat or even to vaccinate in the future if there's, if there's a vaccine. So we need to start modeling. And modeling will also help to understand the immune response because we have all these different factors that we, we study, we identify, but we don't actually understand really well how they, they talk to each other, let's say. This. So modeling also helps that. And to, to actually put into a context where you have the different, because you have to look at the parasite side and the, and the, the host side, and they have to actually communicate too, so we don't understand that too much. So we need more information on it. The conference actually aims to a, actually a very broad number of individuals. But having it in a, in, a, in a country like Brazil, I think would attract a lot of people from uh, all, all over the world. We expect to, to, uh, to attract people from Africa and Asia also, because they have similar problems. And uh, the, when we're talking about this, this disease, I just, I just listed to you. And uh, I hope they can, they can, they can go. There's, the reason that what I think it attracts, because there's identity between Brazil and some other countries is very high. And uh, we, the Brazilian have problem, Brazilian government has programs to support Afghan research too. So that makes uh, very attractive. And we hope to be able to attract also a lot of new students into doing studies on, on co-infections. Because most of the time, the idea is they get out of that because it's a complex, you know, you need to get a thesis out of it or a dissertation and sometimes we don't move that fast. It's a complex area, like I said. So if we get more people that you know, have, uh, like in the list, we have very, very good speakers, really outstanding speakers. And I tried to put some speakers, that's why we decided, oh, let's put some people that are involved directly in this. And uh, not only people that are, well, they are interested, but they're not on the everyday business and that. So I tried to do that, maybe I think we're successful. And uh, so we plan to attract a lot of students, Usually meetings in Brazil attract a lot of students, and I think this is really crucial. And you have several investigators in the country, and also in, in the developed world. It's an enormous amount of, number of individuals now that are interest, interested in co-infections. And the reason because it's a, it's a big challenge to understand immunology on co-infections, and also because 
like I said, it's, it's, it's the rule. That's what happens all the time. Comorbidities is a big issue everywhere. And if you understand in one, one situation or the other, it doesn't matter. You know, you actually get to know how, what, how comorbidity actually interact in the immune system. And the response actually reacted to it. So I think that's so it's a very broad group of people. And if you look at the SAB, the way it's been developing, you know, to this, uh, this meeting is already people talking more and more and more about comorbidities. And I think that's going to grow. And I'm happy that's going to grow because this is the way it should go. By having more people in, involved into this, this will actually move very, accelerate this extremely fast. And uh, if you give opportunities to young people to get involved with these leading individuals, I think this makes an enormous difference. And I think that uh, by looking at the leading investigators around the world interested in comorbidities, I think you're going to, you will attract a lot of young people into that. Because uh, I, uh, I see that that's going to grow very, very, very fast. It's, we have to deal with that, and we have to deal with it now. Because we have new tools, new, very advanced tools, we have a capacity to do a whole lot of high throughput screening of different, different types, as you know. So I think this is going to be crucial. And I think we move fast. We move fast in several areas, not only related to parasites.